Hello, hello, day 17 coming at you for this Unity Game Development Journal. And, um, you know, it's a weekday, so I'm back on doing some animation sprites. Worked on the final sheet, which is the pushing sprite sheet. And, um, yeah, so I got the pushing, I guess, going down on the map. That's done. And I started pushing going up on the map, so I got three frames down to that. And then these are just copied frames from the side. I'll just use these to... I pretty much just change how the body is and move the head around a bit to get the pushing left and right. So that's sort of where that is at. Hopefully I'll get the um, the pushing up on the map done tomorrow. And then I got one more day to do the rest of the sprites there. And then that sheet will be done. And that's the entire character sprite sheet um, for what I have on my list to do right now. Obviously that can expand later on, but that's the starting point. So... Um, I'm going to jump into the game stuff here. I worked uh, quite a bit today on expanding what I worked on yesterday, which was the trading system for the um, NPC character. So when I get, if they want a gem, I can go get a gem and then trade it with them. And based on that trading system, I can also, um, I can also uh, like remove items from my inventory. So I I thought of a unique way of doing that. Like a lot of games, what you can do is just hit a button or delete something straight from your inventory or throw it on the ground and, it, and it's no good anymore. And I thought, well, why don't I make this sort of part of the game mechanic as well, where you can't remove things from your inventory unless you're at a specific location. And the location I'll just call like a trash can. Um, it may be something else, like you have to actually go to a particular booth or a particular building that you can unload your inventory, like sell it or, or just get rid of it, or just a trash can or a lava pit or whatever. I want an actual location that you have to actually travel to to get rid of a piece of uh, inventory. And the way that the inventory is where you have a limited number of slots and you'll have to de decide what you want to put in those slots in order to solve puzzles or accomplish your mission or defeat a boss or whatever, um, it's very important to both choose what you want in, in your inventory and be able to find a location to get rid of things if you picked up the wrong item or you don't need something anymore. So it's really part of the gameplay at that point. It's not just, oh, here's a bunch of stuff. I'll just pick up everything and figure out what I'm going to do with it later. You know, that's the way a lot of games are. This game is going to, you know, you're going to have to think about a lot of different things as you're going through. So I thought it's really fun. So that's how I designed the uh, the system. So I'm just trying to remember everything. I did swap out a couple things for um, like how the code worked, uh, just knowing when the uh, NPC wants something or how much they want. I did that. I also reorganized or added ID uh, items into the uh, database so that maybe tomorrow or in a couple days, I'm going to be able to tie this into my save so I can keep track of everything that's gone on in the dialogue through the save function on the player, which currently I can't. So when you exit out and come back in, it doesn't remember what you've actually talked about with the NPC. So in order to do that, I've, I've thought of uh, IDs that I'm going to put in, and this may work, this may not, uh, that I can actually store in the database or store in the binary file when we save it. Recall that when we load the game back in, and then I'll remember what's what's gone on with dialogue-wise. So anyways, that's to come. I don't know if that system will be the way it is now, but uh, it's there. I've started that. So I have the standard, um, there you go, that dialogue there, that cutscene dialogue, so that's done. Uh, we know it's going to ask for a gem, so let's just go get a gem, or a ruby. So up here you can see the black text there, it says ruby. I'll come over here. And it says, uh, you have what I need, can I have it? So I'm going to click yes, and we'll see that the ruby will actually be gone. So yes, uh, thank God I will wait, uh, blah, blah, blah. So then I'm going to go over here and come back. And now, um, oh, it's because I've, I've added another feature here. So it's asking for it again. Um, will you help me? Yes, okay. So it's asking for that. I'm going to show another feature. The reason why it asked again is because I, I added a feature to be able to convert this NPC over to a trader. And a trader always asks for things. So if you want to, if they have something to offer you, which I haven't set up yet, but say they have like things that they can give you or trade with you, then you can constantly go back to that NPC and do it. The alternative is that they are not a trader and once you've um, given them what they want, that's it. And I'll show you that again in a second, but let's just go and get a Ruby up here. And we're gonna go up to what I set up as a temporary trash can, which is this sort of dungeon entrance here. Um, so if I go up here and the way I've done trash cans is similar to everything else, is I've done it as an interactable um, uh, object, which means that I can still use the one key to interact with things, the E key, 
And in this case, it knows it's a trash can and it's going to get rid of um, one of the rubies. So you can see the rubies are up here. I'm just going to hit E and it got rid of one of them. And if I come down here and hit E, it doesn't do anything. But if I go over to this object here and hit E, it gets rid of it again. So there's the trash can working. That's how I can clear my inventory. Again, I can only have nine uh, inventory slots, so I can go collect all these. There we go. And that's that. So let's show this uh, NPC not being a trader and just see what that looks like. No, gotta go up here. Cutscenes. Go to the hunter. I don't. I label it a hunter, but it's just a B. I don't know why I labeled the hunter, but. So I have this boolean here is trader, and this is the top portion here is where I'm going to be able to set up all the different types of cutscenes there are. So currently, if I have that turned off, it's a normal cutscene; it just goes through the dialogue normally. But if it's a trader, then it's going to constantly be asking for those items. So I'm going to turn that off and go back in here, and we will uh, satisfy the requirements of this guy with a ruby. There we go. Come over here. And it says, uh, you have what I need, can I have it? Yes, and you are so kind, this means the world to me. Now if I go back to him, it's gonna say, I won't forget how you helped me out. So that's the message if we have actually given him something that he wanted, and he's gonna remember that now. Now, he is gonna forget because it's not saving to the player database or the player um, binary save file yet, which I'm gonna hook up later, that's in the next couple of days. But for the most part, that's, uh, that's ready to go, and um, it'll remember that I've actually done that. Not if I go back in, but if I kept going back to him within the game, uh, the character would have remembered. So it's everything I worked on. It was this extension of what I did yesterday, uh, getting rid of things out of your inventory and the trading system is all done, as well as slight reformatting of the dialogue system in a, to enable me to have a setup as being only a trader and also enable me to do the save files later on. So that's uh, day 17 done. Uh, thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you want to follow along with this game development. About another week, uh, I think, and I'll start working on the actual minimum vial product of the game, meaning like one basic tiny little level that has all the different components that I want to work with in the game, like dialogue, uh, action, moving, fighting, and all that kind of stuff in one little tiny thing that I can just test how it all works together. And once that product is done, I can even have people play it. If, if you guys want to download it, you guys can play it. And then once it's done and, and I find out all the kinks and different things that don't work or do work, then I'll start building out the entire game. So if you want to follow along with this process, please subscribe. If you have any comments or want to learn more, drop a comment. And please like if you did like this video. Talk to you later.